So good uh, morning, everyone. Would like to welcome you to the presentation of SICA's results 2012. Also, a warm welcome to our uh, to the people who uh, are connected via our webcast. Um, this morning, we would like to uh, present you um, the results. I will start with the highlights in some uh, strategic aspects, and then Ronald will go into more details for the financial figures and then I will take over the part for the Outlook 2012. When you look at 2012, um, I think we are quite satisfied with our achievements. Our 15,000 employees worldwide have done a fantastic job. They have delivered excellent results improvement. They have also strengthened Sika significantly for the future with all our new investments, which we could uh, and execute in a very fast time period. So you see our highlights, we were able to grow also uh, last year. I think our growth model continues to deliver results also in uh, quite challenging times. As you know, we had not such a good uh, situation in the European markets. Nevertheless, we ended the year with a 5% sales growth. Then together with our significant improvements of our margins, we ended up with a 23% EBIT improvement and together with some improvements of our tax rate, we have then a 31% increase in our net profit. Also the cash flow, I think very pleasing for us. We have the networking capital, we did another improvement and therefore our free cash flow had, I think, the second best result in our history. We were quite busy 2012, also with our acquisitions. Um, we had the eight acquisitions from 2011, which we had to integrate, and also the three new ones, which we closed in 2012. I think for me, the biggest highlight of 2012 is clearly our accelerated investments in the emerging markets. Um, we, have, we will see that later in detail. We have nine new factories we brought into operations in 2012, and this is a fantastic step for us into our future. The PL, <coughs> I commented already, you see from the sales growth to the margin down to the net profit, uh, more and more increase of our results, and um, we are really very pleased that all our people could execute the plan for 2012 and finished with such excellent results. I would like to have a closer look at the regions. Here you see the challenges we had in 2012. You see the negative numbers we had in Europe North and Europe South. Europe South um, looks better. I think we need some power here for the computer. I'm still okay. You see the results for Europe, Europe North huh, with minus 5.8% huh? in Swiss francs. This is quite a drastic, significant drop. Um, we had the big markets huh, like Germany were not so good for us even, or let's at least with stagnating volumes. And then also other markets were quite troubled volume-wise. Worse the situation Europe South. It looks better only on the chart because we had the acquisitions in Italy and Spain. If I take the uh, acquisitions out, our organic growth is very much more negative. However, you see the other, the other four regions of Sika with excellent results in 2012. We have the North America region where we had a significant growth in 2012. We believe the construction markets there have bottomed out in 2011 and um, we could show already a good growth and also for next year we are quite optimistic to continue the positive development. Then we have our Latin America region. For another year we had very pleasing results with 16% uh, sales growth in Swiss francs. This is excellent. We were growing double digit in all markets in Latin America from Brazil up to Mexico. Very pleasing results. Asia Pacific here we end up in the Swiss franc with uh, close to 13% sales growth. 
we were, of course, influenced by the slowdown in China. However, China was then growing again from mid-2012, and we again had the growth in China. Besides China, we had a fantastic growth in Southeast Asia, also double-digit in all markets from Thailand, Malaysia, Vietnam, Indonesia, and the Philippines. Very pleasing results. And finally, the EMEA region, um, challenged by the Arabic Spring. However, also here we have quite good growth potential. When we look at our emerging markets, and this is really, I would say, the core of our strategy at SICA, you see our development in the past 22 years. We started with 9% sales in the emerging markets when SICA was a company of 1.1 billion Swiss francs. And last year, we again grew double digit, over 10% growth emerging markets and our sales contribution increased from 36 to 37%. We are very confident here with our position and we will continue with this in the future. We expect the, um, we expect the emerging markets to continue to contribute such fantastic results. We uh, expect that within the next six to eight years, um, the emerging markets will contribute 45 to 50 percent of Sika sales. We have um, done significant investments. I think you could see that on the next chart. Yeah, uh, we continue to build up the emerging markets. We have uh, nine significant new factories around the globe in 2012, which came into operation. You see um, our list. We have opened the third factory in Brazil, the second factory in Chile. We uh, opened uh, new production lines in China. In Colombia, we already have the fourth factory, very strong position which we have in Colombia. And also Mexico, Peru, other Latin American markets, we opened new factories. In uh, Vietnam, we have the second factory, and maybe one of the most exciting developments is in Mongolia, a country really just starting to emerge, where we also in October last year opened our first small factory to supply the big customers, which in this case are the big mining companies in Mongolia, where Sika is the number one supplier for all the needed additives for the concrete to do the underground mining. So you see we have quite exciting investments which we closed in 2012. Um, as an outlook, uh, we will continue. We have also eight to ten factories for 2013 in the emerging markets which we will open in the course of this year. So we're very confident with our strategy. Um, our model works in the emerging markets, our margins are good, and we will have this accelerated build-up also in 2013. Good. Um, on the next chart now you would see our target market organization. Um, as you know, we have organized Zika for the future. So um, also 2012 was the year where we organized Zika for the future. Um, we had the four business units before, and now we change our marketing and sales organization to the seven target market concept, which gives us much more power to align sales, marketing, and our research and development activities. Overall goal is to have the best solutions and systems for the customer. I come to the innovation later. As you know, we, were, we did a fantastic job, our people, in 2012. We have uh, 73 new patents, which we uh, applied for in 2012, and a lot of new products we introduced in all of these seven target markets. We have then um, organized the uh, executive board accordingly. You have also the chart in the presentation. We were uh, streamlining the executive board from uh, 14 members down to nine. Very important for us. We still have a flat organization, 
We didn't uh, include any additional layer of management. We still have nine members and can continue with Sika's flat organization structure. However, much streamlined, we organize the regions now new from six regions down to four regions. Good, why did we do that? Before we had Europe, for example, separated into Europe South and Europe North. However, they are supplied by the same factories which are mostly on in the countries of Europe North and we need to have a strong profit and loss management who has control from the production to the customer. Therefore, we decided to merge these two European regions so that the regional manager has all the supply chains and the markets in one hand and we don't have a disconnect between production and markets. We had then also the EMEA region, which was a very small region. We also then excluded and uh, put India, Bangladesh and Sri Lanka under Asia Pacific and the remaining Middle East countries we put under the new region EMEA. We believe we have now very strong four regions. All these regions are almost self-sufficient from the supply chains. They supply 90 or more percent of their sales comes from their own manufactured products. So, uh, we talked about the organization. We are also very confident that we uh, did the right developments for the organization here with this new management board. I'm also very happy that all members here are long-time SICA managers and average time with the company is around 21 years. So we have really here a long time seeker people with a broad experience in various countries who can drive the business to the next level. I would now come to the innovation. As you know, innovation is the core of Sika and only if we continuously introduce new products, we are also able to generate the needed margins which you and I are looking for to have also in the future. So we had in 2012 another exciting year for Sika in the research and development area. We have uh, filed for 73 new patents and uh, of course much more new products for all of our seven target markets. I brought you uh, three examples today out of the many we have. The first one is waterproofing for bridges. This is very exciting because it's for refurbishment market. As you know, we have our life cycle concept. So our product range works for the new build construction up to the refurbishment. This is a refurbishment solution where we developed a new waterproof solution, which is much faster than the existing systems. That means you are able to renovate a bridge over the weekend if you are fast enough because our products are curing very fast compared to the traditional system where you need significant more time and you have to close down the bridge and the traffic. That is one example we are introducing in the markets and um, a second one is now also waterproofing but this time it's for new buildings. It's uh, basement waterproofing. We developed a new exciting membrane solution to seal off the concrete basements in houses, buildings and infrastructure. This uh, new system, traditionally you're using a bituminous solution to seal the concrete against water and now we are doing this with a membrane. On the back of the membrane we have bonded the fleece, so this system is bonded to the fresh concrete and has a perfect seal. So even if you have one hole which can occur at some point, you have no lateral water intrusion into other areas. So this is an excellent system, very easy to apply, very flexible, and um, with these prefabricated membranes, and we are now have started to roll out this solution worldwide. We have then the third example I have is uh, the new Hardener system iCure. We presented this to you already several times. This is for our core technology for sealing and bonding, which is uh, 
a main part and backbone of Zika's success. And here we have the new hardener system, which enables us to fulfill much higher standards in emission solvent-free products. And we are introducing this hardener system step by step for all of our Zikaflex products. And this is another one here, the uh, a sealant with very high UV resistant, which we are now introducing into the market. From the acquisition viewpoint, uh, 2012, we had uh, three acquisitions. I would say they were maybe a bit small volume-wise, but uh, very beautiful if you look at the countries where we were able to acquire these companies and also from the target markets. Very happy about the acquisition Yanil we did in Korea for waterproofing of tunnels. This is very important, very big growth segment in the future in Korea where we have um, the um, <coughs> um, sports events coming up and they have huge investment plans for infrastructure planned for the future. We have then in Paraguay, very exciting. We didn't have a Zika company in Paraguay. This was one of the very few blind spots which we have and we could buy the main market leader for construction chemicals in Paraguay, uh, Inertec, and um, they are now in the Zika family and we have therefore a Zika company also in Paraguay, which is another emerging and growing market in Latin America. Then in, uh, with Rutgers in Germany, we have an additional product range which fits very well with our existing business and is a consolidation acquisition. We have, um, last slide I want to share with you for the highlights 2012 is our new communication and branding strategy. As you know, we are, for our industry, we have by far the strongest global brand, very attractive, very successful, and we have now a new slogan with building trust, and also we made some adaptation to our corporate design and to our logo, which are also rolled out now in all our companies worldwide. It's not a revolution, but just one of these necessary evolution steps to make Sika even a stronger brand in the future. Uh, with this, I would like to uh, close my outlook of the highlights 2012 and I pass over to Ronald for more details on the financials. Good morning everybody. I'd like to give you a short walkthrough through our financial results 2012. Go a little bit more in detail here. Once again here the overview of the total, the 5.8% growth on the top line which we did a very substantial improvement on our gross result by 170 base points going from 50.5 to 52.2. And then afterwards, our profitability improved strongly, EBITDA plus 90, EBIT plus 23, net probably plus 31. If you look down there, you see equity ratio is uh, slightly down compared to last year at 47%. That's due to the new bond that we brought out in the middle of the year. So we increased a little bit our balance sheet total by this, so that's why it's coming down there. And the row C is at 18.3, so a little bit below our uh, mark of 20%, uh, which is our target. That's mainly due to the large acquisitions which we did in 2011, and it takes some time to bring them really up to speed. You know, but uh, within two years or something like that, it should be washed out uh, of our row C target. If you look a little bit more in detail at the sales, the top line, you see the 5.1, uh, 5.8 up again. Organic growth was at 1.8 for the entire year. But I think it's important to say that if you look throughout the year, we could see an improvement from the, uh, from the uh, organic growth from Q2, Q2, Q3, Q4. You can see a clear increasing pattern there. Acquisition effect is 3.5%, mainly due to acquisitions which we did in 2011. Most of these acquisi acquisitions were towards the end of the year, so that's where you see the effect here. And the currency effect, we had a slightly positive currency effect by uh, 0.5 uh, percentage points, you know, which 
partly comes from the euro compared to last two, 2011, and on the other hand, of course, also mainly from Asia and from the US dollar development that we had. Looking at the sales growth by region, what you see here, uh, I think important to say that we did very good results, mainly in the emerging markets, as you see here, North, uh, Asia Pacific, Latin America, very nicely up, North America, also nicely up with 14% overall, 3% if you look just at the organic growth there, uh, and Europe, of course, where we were, especially if you look at the organic, but this was already explained in the minus by minus 4 in the north and minus 7 in Europe south. Construction and industry, if you look at the divisions here, you see it's still the same. That's every year the same that I show here. 80% is construction, about 20% is industry. Nothing changed there. We have a slight improvement of our uh, portion that we do in emerging markets, where we have 37% compared to 63% in the mature markets. Uh, the 37 is only that low here this year because a lot of the acquisitions which we did in 2011 really went into the mature markets. If I just would look at the organic development, of course, we would have already a larger part here in the emerging markets. That's the improvement of our gross result that you see here. Up here you see the development of the gross result since 2007, and down here you see the average uh, 12 months of the uh, development, so that's a very honest picture that you see here because here you can really see what happens and what is really sustainable in the end. And you see here clearly the nice improvement coming down from the 50s going up above the mark of 52 uh, that we have reached here. There's a bundle of measures which is behind there, you know, of course, good price management on the one side, but also introduction of new products with good margins, pushing also the mix a little bit, so having more refurbishment with like slightly higher margins. So it's a bundle of mix which in the end leads to this result. Cost development shows a little bit a different picture, especially if you look just at the actual figures up here. You see the uh, sales development 5.8. If you look at the total non-material cost in total, uh, we are up 6.7%, so that's slightly over-proportional. Uh, there are reasons for that. Uh, main reasons I showed down here, it's acquisitions, of course, which add to that. Uh, we have some one-offs in it. One-offs not in 2012, but very positive one-offs we had in 2011. Uh, and we have uh, some restructuring uh, costs in it, restructuring costs which are not that big that we could go really into uh, show them separately, but these are restructuring costs that you usually have uh, in a company of our size. So, but if you correct that, we see the picture down here. We would end up here, if we just look at the organic growth, by 2.4. Uh, the difference between 1.9 that you showed before and the 2.4 is currency that you have in there. And uh, if I compare that with all the corrections on the cost side, we would have a cost growth of 1%, which is much more in line what we do on the top line. So uh, there's not a cost buildup in the company uh, if you look at it in this way. And that's also what you can expect afterwards if you look into 2013. EBIT relative uh, and absolute by region that I would like to show here. First, let me say that we had a nice EBIT improvement in all the regions, with one exception. Europe South went down one notch, but all the other regions had significant improvement in their, uh, in their EBIT ratios. We have all the regions close or above uh, the 10%, with the exception of Europe South. The strongest increase we really saw in uh, North America, they were able to increase their EBIT by 37%. And also Asia Pacific was showing a very nice result. They increased now by 22% to the 13.4% uh, relative to net sales that we have in here. Also, I think it's remarkable to say that if we add these two regions here together on the absolute level, 43% of our 
EBIT from operations is really coming out of these two regions, Asia Pacific and Latin America. If you look at the total overview once again here, I don't want to go through the details here. Again, I think uh, something that we would, should mention down here, financial expenses, no big changes in there, more or less uh, standard what you see here. Income taxes uh, went up a little bit, of course, due to the results, but in the end, if you look at the tax rate, we are down again at 28.5 compared to the 31.9 we had last year. I think there is a various reasons behind that, so we didn't do big structural changes or something like that. I think it's a more proactive, uh, more active uh, tax management that we are doing. We are caring a little bit more today about what's happening really in the individual regions, individual countries out there. And I think what you see here are first results of these uh, efforts that we are doing. If we go into the balance sheet, also here, no big surprising changes if you look at that. I mean, the biggest step that you really see in here is in the cash up here where we have now uh, nine, almost one billion in cash uh, due to good cash flow, of course, but also due to uh, an additional bond of 300 which came in. Uh, others than that, no big changes in here. If you look at the liability side, you have some changes in here on the current liability. This is a bond uh, which was mature now in February, which we pay back of 250 million, which turned into the short term, uh, and so therefore into the current liability. On the other hand, we have uh, down here on the non-current liability, the bond of 250 which went out, and the additional of 300 which came in, which gives you in the end this difference that we have between 2011 and 2012. So no big changes on the balance sheet apart from this uh, few moves. If you look at our networking capital, and I think that's something we really can a little bit proud about if you look at this, we did again a uh, nice improvement from 2011 to 2012 from 19.8% of net sales to 187 Okay, we had some tailwind from currency, I show you that down here. So if we compare it with uh, constant FX rates, we went down from 19.7 to 19, so it didn't change really the direction. And I think what's especially nice to see here, if we make the long-term comparison, we are coming down from 2008, where we had 22% uh, percent of net sales down to the 19 uh, in 2012. So I think uh, that shows that we have our networking capital quite under control. If you look at our cash flow statement, I think it's uh, most remarkable to see here. The free cash flow went up by 250 million out of various reasons, of course. You have profit in there, you have good networking capital management, which shows you that. And uh, also on the invest side, we have a little bit less invest uh, in this year, mainly due to less acquisitions, not due to less capex. Capex is even up a little bit, so we spent for capex 125 million in uh, 2012 uh, compared to 110, which we did uh, one year before. Uh, of course, on the acquisition side, it looks a little bit different. There we spent uh, around 14 million this year, and last year we had cash out of 150. So that's where the difference really is coming from if you look at the development of our free cash flow. The financial targets, I'd like to show here again targets in front here that, is a, that are the corridors that we would like to be in. I would like to remind it's an average target we talk here about. It's also a long-term target. We are not talking about the one-year guidance if you talk about these targets, but it's an average and it's uh, mid to long-term. So that's also why, you show, why I show you here the five-year average where we are and you see we missed targets here on the net sales growth. We are only on an average of 6%. And this will also be challenging. We're going to see that later due to the situations that we have in Europe to come back to growth rates like that here. Uh, and we miss it also on the downline here with the 19, where we are not with the 20s. I explained that already before. That's mainly due to the acquisitions, which takes some time to bring them up to speed on the same profitability level as the entire group. Usually it takes us uh, one, two years. 
until they are back there, and we had quite nice acquisitions, large acquisitions in 2011. That's what you feel uh, in these figures if you look at them. With that, I come to my last chart to show what the board is proposing for dividends in this year. We propose, or the board proposes, a 13% higher dividend. So that means we would uh, distribute 51 francs on the bearer shares and about 1,850 on the registered shares. That's an increase, as I said, by 13%. Last year we were here at 45 compared to the 51. If you look at the total payout ratio down here, it's 46 compared to the 53 last year. So uh, that's in line with our constant dividend policy that we like to show. The dividend yield, it's always a little bit tough to say because you don't know which uh, price, stock price you really take. If you take 2,300 as a stock price, then we would be at something like 2.3% dividend yield. With that, I would like to close my financial presentations and to give the word back to Jan. <coughs> Thank you, Ronald. Um, I would like to come to the outlook for this year. Um, again, we believe in, uh, we have strengthened our growth model in 2012 with our investments, but also with all the new products which we developed and which we are currently introducing into the markets. So we believe we are in good shape for this year, and we believe that our growth model will also deliver in 2013. Um, you have seen some of our concepts when we talk from roof to floor with our seven target markets. I have shown you two target markets of uh, waterproofing and also sealing and bonding and to show you a little bit how the innovation works in the practical life. We have uh, also seen from the waterproofing, from the new build to the refurbishment, also our, our, our life cycle concept works. Very important, again, we have our meteor markets where maybe 80 to 90% of our business is related to refurbishment. And we have the emerging markets where maybe around 90% is new built. So um, we are very confident to see that our model works in all of these markets. But however, very challenging, of course, for our technology people and our marketing experts. For push and pull market channels, where we like to put our Seeker brand on top, um, you have seen we also do the next level of our communication and branding strategy. And um, last year we were for the first time voted in the top 50 brands of Switzerland. Um, and now with the new slogan and the new adaptations, we are confident to continue there. <coughs> we will have uh, for the emerging markets, as I said, we will see another maybe 8 to 10 factory openings in 2013. All of them in the emerging markets from Eastern Europe to Latin America to Asia Pacific to accelerate our strong position and our growth in these markets. Uh, finally, our leading role in market consolidation. We are constantly working to have new partners in our Seeker family. However, Sometimes it, uh, you always have to get the right target who fulfills our strategic criteria and our financial criteria. However, our pipeline is filled with interesting projects and we hope that we can also close acquisitions in 2013. I want to share the market outlook, how we see the markets for Sika in 2013. Um, we believe Asia-Pacific will be a strong market for us. We see China now after the elections, everything is over. After our positive development of the second half 2012, we have a good expectation for China. We believe we can grow there double digit in 2013. The same dynamics we see in Southeast Asia, where we also will see a double digit growth and from the other markets in Asia Pacific, Pacific and Japan, Korea, we expect stable volumes. Latin America, there are some, always some clouds on the sky, 
At the moment, we have some issues in Venezuela and Argentina with some protective measurements of the government. Nevertheless, we are also quite positive for Latin America and believe we will also grow double digit in Latin America in 2013. North America, single digit growth. We believe they have buttoned out. They have a huge uh, demand for refurbishment of all their bridges, roads, and other infrastructure projects. And we see there quite some potential for us in 2013 to see another growth. In the European region, we are, of course, not so positive. We are, have a very volatile situation, and uh, we don't see much growth coming from Europe. Overall, when you translate that, as uh, Ronald has mentioned, we expect our sales growth for 2013 to be, to be between 4 to 6 percent. And uh, then we believe that the financial targets we have set in our mid and long term strategy we will achieve in 2013. However, on the lower of the range, so we are satisfied if we can reach a 12 percent EBITDA result in 2013 net profit above 6% and, and a return on capital employed of around 20%. With this, I would like to uh, go over to the questions and answers. Please feel free to challenge us after we were already challenged by the computer technology today. Now it's your turn. Good morning. Uh, Michael Roost from Bank and Bellevue. Just a first question on your, um, your target for 2013 on the EBITDA level, 12%. That seems like uh, maybe a little bit um, on the conservative end if we compare that to 2012. Can you give us maybe a bit of an idea what the underlying assumptions are? And then the second question is on the tax rate. How would you say that this is relatively sustainable going forward? Thank you. Okay, I, answer, I would like to answer the first uh, part of your question and then the tax rate uh, Ronald will take over. <coughs> um, again, I think in 2012, we were very much pressured to recover our results. As you know, we were sitting here together one year ago. You were not happy with the margins. We were not happy with the margins. And I think we fixed it. However, we cannot uh, have a too cloudy outlook. We have the raw material prices. They will remain on a high level in 2013. We don't expect them necessarily to increase further, but I think they will remain on a high level. And we have to focus on our growth strategy and not to squeeze the margins uh, into the sky. This is uh, why we have a conservative outlook for the year. However, I believe with 12% EBITDA, we are on a, on a good track. Okay, regarding the uh, tax, I think uh, we should look at the stable uh, development of a tax rate uh, due to various reasons. One reason is I think we internally can do better. We are working on this one, but on the other side, if you look at the external development, you know, we get more and more pressures in various countries on the tax issues. So these are two things which I think will probably uh, be more or less in balance. So I think best is to look at it uh, as the stable development, 28, 28.5. That's probably the right figure to look at. Uh, yes, I have Serge Rotter from Bank von Tobel. I have uh, several questions. The first one would be on growth. You mentioned that you have opened several factories this year, also want to open uh, more uh, several factories this year. So I have the impression a little bit that you changed your focus from organic growth away from inorganic growth. Is this conclusion correct, that you don't make that much acquisition, that you more focus on, on that than to the to, uh, for on M&A. And secondly, when I compare annual report 2011, you have totally different uh, figures in local currency, growth in local currency, than, than it's here on, on the statement. So I'm a little bit puzzled. And on that, I always thought that 
the goal is to grow 8 to 10 percent organically, not in local currency. I'm, I'm, I'm wrong there. Um, yes, first two questions. Okay, I take the first part, and then Ronald has the difficult one. Um, no, I think it's clear. When I think if you open new factories, we did that in the past too, but uh, we, uh, I think, defined that for the emerging markets, it's not enough to have one factory in a country like Brazil, where it's almost like a continent, and we're going to have a situation in five years where we go from one factory back in 2008 to maybe five or six factories to really cover this fast emerging country. We have similar situations even in a small country like Vietnam, however has a 3,000 kilometer coastline and uh, our liquid and powder products you cannot ship uh, from one uh, location, especially with the very difficult infrastructure in these countries. So to really exploit the potential of these markets, you have to have more than one factory. Of course, not for our membranes, not for our adhesives, but for our powder and liquid products, we, uh, we need uh, several new plants. So I consider this also organic growth. And then for the acquisitions, this is still a focus. However, we need the right targets. We are not uh, compromising our financial targets. We're not compromising our strategic direction. The new companies have to fit with us, and, uh, and we are very strict with our criteria. Um, Ronald, do okay. you want to comment on the numbers? Okay. I mean, this goes more or less exactly in the same direction if you look here. Uh, I think you reflect to the growth rates of that, that there are differently. Uh, what, we, what we said, we include, as long as we don't make really large acquisitions, which are changing the pictures, you know, as long as we are going with smaller acquisitions, as we did now in 2000 and, uh, uh, 2012, you know, then we include that in the target. So when we now talk about the uh, target growth of uh, 8 to 10 percent, that includes the smaller acquisitions in it. Of course, if you do a big deal or something like that, then of course you have to exclude that to show. But here it's included in these figures. And that's why also the figures are restated on the growth line to this, uh, to this topic. As uh, Jan said, I mean, in, if you look at our strategy, you know, it's really, uh, if we are talking about this small acquisitions, you know, you really cannot properly uh, differentiate, you know, are we now growing by organic investments or are we really going by acquisitions? That's something big, different by bigger ones, but if you just talk about small companies, small factories, as for example in China, which we were buying, you know, uh, so that's very, very much uh, the similar to what you see uh, between organic and uh, acquisitions driven. And on the other hand, with our target that we are setting on the row C down there, which includes, of course, acquisitions in it, you know, uh, so these two things uh, match better together. So that's the change which you see between the two, between the figures which were presented here and which you find in the new report and the ones you had in 2011. Hi there. Uh, two questions. Uh, the first one on the, the, the sales target, which you uh, dropped today, I think moved, moved from 8 to 10% to something like 4 to 6%, and that's because of the Europe uncertainties. I'm guessing uh, that's because you see these uncertainties persisting for a certain amount of time. Can you give us some information on how long you expect those problems to persist? That's the first question. The second one is about uh, mergers and acquisitions. Are you not tempted to uh, ramp up uh, your merger activity or uh, given, given that the, uh, you know, there's, there's some problems in Europe and you can't reach your sales goals um, uh, with your business as it currently stands? I think first question, uh, maybe again I would like to mention under the circumstances, I think uh, if we can grow 4 to 6% in 2013, this will be an excellent result. Uh, we cannot uh, expect to have any, any more dynamics with such markets, especially in Europe. Uh, when it comes to acquisitions, I think we have to be realistic. There are not so many deals in our industry, and you have to select well. So we have a constant pipeline of acquisition projects we are working on. However, it's quite a timely, needs some time, and we really want to make sure that the company, technology, the market really offers synergies. And then, as Ronald mentioned, our financial criteria have to be, have to be met which leads to some projects being turned down in the 
past months or years because they couldn't achieve our financial uh, criteria. So there's no motivation to increase the takeover activity just because some markets are growing a little bit less fast than another one? It's something, you know, with the acquisitions, it's like finding a wife, you know. You can make a, the biggest plan, you know, <laughs> the biggest plan that you want to marry next year, but at the end you have to find the right woman. And uh, with acquisitions, I think it's the same. You cannot force it. Uh, if you force it, you end up with not the best wife. You end up with something. So, so we don't do that. <laughs> Thank you for the advice. <laughs> <laughs> Sturm from Kepler, I have a few brief questions for you. First, your networking capital development over recent years have been quite impressive. How much uh, further scope is there for improvement? Uh, second, I was wondering if you could share your thoughts on um, inflation for your key raw materials for this year, how you see that shaping up. Then thirdly, on Taking your comments on what you say about the U.S. on board, can we therefore expect EBIT margin, given the operational leverage, to go above 10% again in the U.S.? Uh, and then just on m and I mean, I very much understand your comments, but can you maybe just outline if, from an ideal point of view, where you still, still see white spots in terms of being, feeling underrepresented in, in the marketplace, where from an ideal point of view, you'd like to be stronger. Thank you. Okay. Um, I start from your last question with the acquisitions. Um, I think um, white spots, we are the market leader in construction chemicals by far. Um, I think uh, this year we will have a situation that maybe we are double the size of the next competitor. However, our market share is maybe 8 to 9% globally. So it's very clear there is plenty of room for consolidation and for, uh, for acquisitions in, in basically all markets. What's that here? US. The US is, a, is a, of course, if we can grow with a medium or above medium single digit in North America, we will be, of course, satisfied. And then, of course, we will see some some improvement in the margin. But again, I think it's fair to say we did our improvements in the margin in 2012, as promised to you. For this year, we are conservative. We don't believe we will see a significant increase in the margins for 2013. Also, as the raw material markets will maintain on a high level. It's very difficult to make. You were asking for a prognosis very difficult to make because um, uh, the crude oil price remains on a high level. However, we see that the demand for, for our suppliers is, uh, is on a lower level. So it's quite some friction on different sides or different ends and very hard to predict where this is going to end up. However, we are confident that we have a stable situation for 2013. Maybe I can take the networking capital question. Uh, you're right, we did a very nice improvement now during the last uh, five years. I think, uh, can you expect new further improvements? I think yes, but they will have to be done very, very individual. We have to be careful not to stress the situation. You know, so you can't go in and just say, okay, now we go another down, another one percent down or something like that. Everybody is doing the same thing. Now you really have to address the situation, country by country. Look at the specific situation, and I think there is still some improvement potential there, but it will not materialize in the same way as you have seen now uh, during the last five years. We have to be careful a little bit to protect our top line, to, to protect our margins and stuff like that. So it will be an individual approach. Uh, and uh, maybe we have improvement, but not in this magnitude as you have seen it now the last five years. Martin Hiesler from Zürcher Kantonalbank. I have uh, three questions. Uh, first of all, two of your uh, biggest markets, Switzerland and Germany, uh, showed uh, a flat 
uh, respectively a negative volume or, or sales in, uh, development 2012. Can you shed some light on these two specific markets and uh, uh, some uh, thoughts about the outlook for those two countries? Uh, then uh, a question about the results from associates. Uh, it came down by about 8 million in the P&L. What was the, the reasons, uh, uh, what reason for this uh, decrease? And then uh, I think you change now your reporting format. Uh, will you deliver the pro forma figures for the new regional setup uh, uh, sales and EBIT wise? Okay, maybe I'll take the Germany and Switzerland question. We have um, Switzerland, of course, you see, is a quite booming for the residential real estate. However, our business is also very connected to infrastructure, namely the uh, new Gotha tunnel, where we had a huge uh, supply contract, and this was basically running out last year. So we were uh, inf uh, affected by this. That's basically the main change we had in Switzerland. Other than that, we have very good market share in Switzerland. Of course, we had a little bit pressure with the uh, European uh, uh, Euro and, and some pressure on the prices in Switzerland, some small effect, but uh, overall we are quite satisfied with the business in Switzerland and have basically the main effect was the Gotthard Tunnel. Uh, when we go to Germany, we were also quite pleased with the result of Germany, where we had to make a quite some, we made some changes in, uh, in the marketing and sales areas and uh, to improve our margins and results. And volume-wise, we were, as you said, a little bit uh, maybe decreased also because large infrastructure projects were not as much, have, didn't have as much speed as the uh, residential building area. The automotive division, I think we have a comment in the media release of this morning. We were very pleased. We have a double-digit growth in automotive, even organically, uh, because we, are, we have an excellent position, very innovative new products for structural bonding. I think I showed you an example last year at, the, uh, at our um, media day, and um, also because we are well positioned with the customers which are growing, so BMW, Volkswagen Group, uh, Toyota, and also with uh, local Chinese manufacturers. But also in Germany and for Europe, where the, the car sales figures weren't that impressive as in China. Yeah. But even in China, the, the German figures don't include the automotive business, which we do uh, right. on a global organization unit. Um, and even in Germany, we were growing because we have uh, a lot of very innovative new products and we increase the value which we can generate by each car. Okay, the uh, income from associates is mainly linked to uh, changes uh, in consolidation that we did in the Middle East area. You know, we had on the one hand uh, from the first step in this consolidation in 2011, we had a special effect of that uh, of about 6 million, which you had in 2011. And on the other hand, now in 2012, we have fully consolidated over Saudi, Saudi, or the Saudi Arabian operations, and that in the end leads to this uh, decrease on uh, the in this income. On the other side, uh, the next question was regarding the reporting. The reporting here in 2012, of course, bases fully on the organizational structure what we had till the end of December. You know, so from now on, we will change, of course. From now on, already the, uh, the, the quarterly reports and so on will come in the new region format. But the format, the reporting format will stay the region. That's our management line. That's our... Uh, leading line that we have and that's our these are our segments you know so we will not change now to a target market reporting whatever it will still be the reporting by region but the region are defined in different I mean, yes deliver 
Yes, of course, of course, of course, everything will be there, will be comparable, of course, of course. We just wanted to stay clear on this report here and not mix it now with two different structures. But of course, when we come out with growth figures or whatever during the year, you will have the performer figures and the comparable figures for 2012. Dan Pommerin for mine first. Um, you mentioned that the number of expansion projects will be about the same in 2013 as in 2012. What does that mean for the CapEx level? Will CapEx be about the same? And could you also share with us a um, view on the long-term CapEx uh, target, CapEx to sales ratio or something like that? Thank you. I mean, if we look at the the average that we spend on capex it's always between 3 and 4% of total net sales and you can expect uh, this number to be within this corridor also for the future and that uh, gives also the answer for 2000 and uh, for 2013 so it will be more or less in the same in the same area as what you've seen in 2012 Uh, be interested in hearing uh, your view on, on pricing. So uh, last last year, what was the pricing uh, impact uh, overall for, for the group? And uh, given a bit the, the puzzling situation with respect to the input costs and whether they move down, up, and uh, how much the, the demand on the, the volume side will be, what is what is your pricing power? What is I mean, what do you expect in terms of pricing to do on your, on your side? Is there scope for uh, for more price increases? And if yes by how much and maybe timing wise whether it will be rather you know whether you plan some um, price increases with the or did already with the new lists or uh, what are your plans on this that's mm. one question and then another one is more on the cash flow statement side I saw there is always some deferments in terms of cash out from acquisitions I wonder how much uh, cash will go out from past acquisitions in 2013 still Pricing power, I know it's a, it's a key topic nowadays. Um, I think um, I like to look at it a little bit different different way. I think in the difficult times like we have now, the strong company who has the cost under, in, under control, or let's say who's improving the cost position, who has ongoing innovation, that's the company who is successful in the market and who can demand a price which is uh, ensuring sufficient margins. The discussion on the sales price increase, I, I don't feel so good because we are long, time, long term committed with our customers. So it's not a question like maybe for other businesses or companies where we uh, uh, set the sales price according to, <laughs> to our uh, profit level or something. I think we have achieved a good level in 2012. And as I said before, for the margin, we will maintain the margin in 2013 on a similar level. We don't plan now to make another significant increase. We are very committed with our customers. We are committed in several big construction projects for 2013. And uh, of course, we will have adaptations, especially in countries in emerging markets where sometimes you have huge inflation. There sometimes you have to price on a monthly basis. But, uh, but as a general guideline, I would say uh, we feel confident with our margin level for 2013. I mean, it was in the vicinity of 2%. Okay, I think uh, I take the, the cash flow question hmm, that, you, that you raised there. I think you don't have to expect really a big uh, cash outs from acquisition 2012 in 2013. Uh, since we did only three acquisitions and smaller acquisitions, you know, this uh, cash out will be between five and ten million, something like that. Uh, just a, a brief question to the development into the new year. If you perhaps could give a picture on the biggest regions, Germany, China, which I guess was imported by the Chinese, uh, in, 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 uh, influenced by the Chinese New Year, 
um, and perhaps in Latin America, how things started in 2013. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> this, is always, this is always tough for us because our industry is uh, influenced, especially in Europe, by the winter and the climate. So we see December, January, February are, are quite slow months. And, and therefore, it's very difficult to make a, a early prognosis. Even the first quarter results um, is, is a lot of uh, weather-depending issues on this. So, so we are not so happy to comment early in the year. But again, we are quite uh, positive on the general outlook, as we described before. Uh, Robin Kuman from Deutsche Bank. Uh, if I can just jump on the, on the pricing uh, question again. Um, assuming that we have, sadly, another push on the upside on, on overall aromat, what would you do? Would you have to come back with your clients, although I understand where, what you want to do from a mid to long term strategy and so on? Would you like to, or do you have to, to go back actually and then re increase prices like you had to do in the uh, 2012? Oh, I think it's clear. I think we described a little bit last year how we have some delay because we are committed for large projects. But as a general guidance, we, of course, uh, uh, will not allow our margins to slip under certain levels. And therefore, we will have our uh, bundle of actions uh, to improve. And then uh, coming back on the other question, which was about Q1, I understand that in Q1 and Q2 2012, uh, we had some headwinds in, uh, in China, especially on in admixture. Uh, can I understand that uh, since fall 2012, the Chinese situation has been uh, uh, Im improved? And can you confirm that what you see up to now in 13 is actually something very still positive? And maybe if you can get your feel about how you see the rest of the year there. For China? Yes, please. Uh, for China, we are we were from uh, middle 2011 to middle 2012. We had a, a depressed volumes in the construction market in China, uh, driven by the uh, election coming up, but also driven by the problems on some of the big infrastructure projects. They had especially on the big uh, train projects, they had safety issues, they had maybe some other issues, and then they were literally stopping these projects. So we had a, had a couple of these projects where we are key suppliers where uh, suddenly there was no more uh, supply. Uh, however, we see that from the summer 2012, it picked up again. And we are, I would say, positive for this year and believe we grow double digit in China in 2013. Which is great for Q1 numbers in the end, right? Sorry? Which is great for the Q1 numbers in the end, right? Again, <laughs> again, I hope so, yes, I, I hope so. But the Q1 is always for us a difficult quarter, the most difficult quarter because of the weather influence in Europe. And then you have, quite, and you have the lowest sales volume. So you have a bit of fluctuation. Huh? So we can end up in quite a range. Thank you. I will quickly take over. Uh, there's also from Bank Fontable again. Uh, still, I don't understand this margin guidance, to be honest, because last year you were growing by 2.4% organically. Now you're guiding for more than double organic growth. And thanks, Mr. Trex, we know that even with 2.4% growth, uh, organically material costs were only up 1%, so you had leverage even on 2.4% organic growth. So then, secondly, when, uh, when uh, Mr. Traxler adjusted it by the acquisition impact in 2012. And as we know, you didn't make that much acquisition in 2012. So you will not have higher costs in 2013 due to acquisition. So again, we will fully see uh, a, a certain leverage. And as far as under I understood, the gross profit margin should remain at 52.2%, something like that. What is kind of a recurring level. You showed also in the rolling gross profit margin development. So with stable gross margin and no acquisition impact, and leverage already in 2.4% with guidance for double organic growth, I can't see where you have higher costs. That margin is only slightly higher than this. So are you now suggesting we have less growth but more profit? <laughs> <laughs> Depends what you, what you want to do, but... <laughs> well, well, again, I mean, I think the guidance we gave was, uh, was as precise as we have ever given. And, uh, and again, we are optimistic for, to deliver our sales growth this year, 4 to 6%. 
with the recovering of China and some other positive outcomes of our investments, which we undertook in 2012. And for the cost side, you know, you have to be realistic. It's not that you can operate these additional factories with no people. So uh, there is some headcount buildup also in the emerging markets. That's why we are, I don't even say conservative, that's why we <coughs> believe we will have a slight improvement in the, in the EBITDA margin, but we will not make another big jump. May I may add one thing to that, you know, take also Europe, Europe South, for example, you know, Europe South declining now since several years, you know, there are limitations what you can do on the efficiency side if you want to stay in these markets, you know, so therefore uh, you can't uh, make this efficiency calculations all over the world, you know, so uh, if you look at Europe South, you, you can come to an end there, you know. But was not the story of special in Europe South that you have keep your salespeople, that you have one market share in Europe South, that you even have Absolutely. better margin in Absolutely. Europe South, thanks to that, that you, your, your Absolutely genius right. strategy. So what is... Absolutely what is right. Now? But if you, do, if you do adapt your structure for several years, you know, to the new lower sales volume that you have there, you know, then you reach certain limits that you are there. So you can't do that at, the, at eternity. Hmm? So that's, that's something you have to calculate in there. Good. I think we have no more questions. In this case, uh, I hope you join us for lunch outside and we can have uh, maybe more discussions. Thank you very much.